This simple if-else statement is just taking our favorite animal and printing out a different string depending on what our animal is. But already this code is a little bit complicated to read and we only have three animals we're comparing. If we started to add 5, 10, 20, even 100 different animals, this code would be unmanageable immediately. So in this video, I'm going to show you how switch statements can make this much cleaner. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And I'm gonna show you how you can take this code and change it to make it much easier to read by using switch statements. So first to understand what this code is doing, if we just change our favorite animal over here, you can see based on what animal I choose, it prints out different text on the side of the screen, as you can see there. And if we print out something that's not there, it just goes down to this else. So all we're doing is we're taking this favorite animal variable, as you can see here, we're comparing it to a hard-coded value, and we're just seeing if that value is the same, then do something, otherwise check the next and the next and so on and until we get down to the else. So this is the perfect scenario for a switch statement. Anytime you're taking one variable and comparing it against a bunch of different values, that is where you want to use a switch statement. So for now, I'm just going to comment out all of this code. I'm going to come above it and we're going to write out a switch statement. To do so, you just write the text switch, super straightforward. And then you put some parentheses and inside the parentheses, you put the variable you're doing for all your comparisons. So in our case, that is our favorite animal. And that's all we do. Then we just put in here some curly braces and this is where all the code for our switch is going to go. So then in order to set up a statement for your switch, you need to type in the word case followed by the value you want. So if we want to check for cat, we would just type in the text of cat. So right now what's happening is we're saying, okay, check our favorite animal against all of the different cases we have. Right now we just have one case. And we're saying if our favorite animal is equal to this value, which is a cat, then run the code inside this case. So to end off this case, all we need to do is put a colon and then put enter and then all the code inside of here, that's what's going to run. So if I just say console.log, cat and I come up here and I change this to cat you can see it now prints out the text cat because it's saying okay it has matched that case but if I change this to like dog instead of cat you can now see nothing prints out because it doesn't match any of our cases now one thing that I generally like to do with my case statements is I like to wrap them actually inside of curly braces you don't need to do this but it makes it a little bit easier to write your code because by doing this it creates a specific scope so variables like const and let aren't going to leak outside that if this is confusing you don't understand what scope is I have a full video covering it I'll link in the cards in the description for you but either way I just like to do this and it also makes my code a little bit easier to read. So what I want to do is I just want to take all the code we had down here. I'm just going to essentially copy it up. So here's our cat code. Let's do the case for dog. And I'll come in here and I'm just going to remove these curly braces for now so we can see what this looks like both ways. So I'll just come in here, console.log that dog code out. So let me just copy it, paste it in there. I'm going to do the same thing with our shark case. There we go. Copy over that code. I'm going to paste that down. And for now, that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to change this back to cat and we'll see what happens when I save. You'll notice something interesting. On the right hand side, it prints out all three of our different logs, which is obviously not what we want. The reason for this is the way a switch works is it runs your code. It starts top to bottom and checks each case individually. So what happens is it checks the cat case here and it says, OK, favorite animal is equal to cat. So then run the code inside that case and also run all of the other code in my switch statement until the very end. So if we were to change this to dog, you'll notice it doesn't match cat, so it skips that one, and it goes down to the second one where it matches dog, and then it runs everything after that. Same thing here, if I change it to shark, you'll notice it just runs our code down here at the bottom. Obviously, this is not what we want, so when you're using a switch statement, if you want to stop executing code after a specific case runs, you just need to put the code break. If you add the line break anywhere inside your switch statement, what that's going to do is it's going to immediately exit your switch statement as soon as it runs into this break. So now, if I do cat, you'll notice it prints it out perfectly dog works just fine and shark also works out fine they all only print out one single console log and that's because what happens is if we change it back to dog here you notice it'll go to cat doesn't match so it skips to the next case which is dog it matches so it runs the console log sees this break and immediately exits to the very bottom of our switch which is where this curly brace is right here so the only thing we have left to perfectly replicate what we had before is to deal with this else case and to do that inside of a switch statement you just need to type in the text default put a colon afterwards and then we can do our old console log for whatever that was. So I'll just copy that over, paste that into here. And now you can see if we put something like cow, which is not in the list, it's going to go all the way down to this default case. And you could also put break inside here to make sure it doesn't run any other case afterwards. To be completely honest though, this break case is pretty much unnecessary because it already is gonna exit afterwards. So you don't really need it, but you can put it there if you want for consistency purposes. Now, what happens if a user types in something like Bobcat? A bobcat is technically a type of cat, so we probably want to group it with this cat case. So we could come in here, we could copy this down, paste this down, type out bobcat, and now you can see that it works just fine. 
Well, the problem with doing this is we've duplicated our code inside of here. You can see that these two lines are exactly the same. So the nice thing with switch statements is when you want to check for multiple different values, you can actually do that really easily by just putting them one after the other. Because we know that once we match a case, in our case Bobcat, it'll continue to run our code until it reaches a break statement. So when it matches Bobcat, it'll continue to run all the code, which includes this code right here, and then it'll hit this break and exit. So when I save, you can see it prints out cats are great. I can do the same thing. I can come in here with like a Jaguar, for example. And now if I change this to Jaguar, you can see that also prints out cats are great. Now, the thing to keep in mind, if you are doing the curly braces that I talked about, you just want to put the curly braces on the very last of your cases. So whatever cases contain code, those are going to be the ones with curly braces. So our code would look something like this if we wrapped it inside of curly braces. And again, this is entirely optional. It's just something I generally tend to like to do when it comes to switch statements because it makes working with scope a little easier. And again, I have that video linked in the cards and description for you if you want to learn more about scope. Now, the biggest issue most people run into when they deal with switch statements is you try to put in your equal sign somewhere or like you like come up here and say like equals cat or something like that. This is not going to work. You just need to make sure you put the variable you want to compare right here and then all the specific values for that. You can't do things like check if a number is greater than five, for example, or less than 10. Those kinds of things don't work with switch statements. Switch statements only work when you want to check to see if a variable is equal to a specific value. That's all it can do. And that's all there is to switch statements. Now, this is just one of the many fundamental concepts you need to learn about JavaScript. So if you want a course that's going to take you from knowing absolutely nothing to an intermediate level JavaScript developer, you're going to want to check out my JavaScript simplified course. It'll be linked down in the description. This course teaches you everything you need to know from the very basic fundamentals of JavaScript all the way to the more advanced features like testing, security, and clean code. Again, if you're interested in this course, I highly recommend you check it out. It's linked down in the description below. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.